change and we'll come back to this because this is a point I wanted to make. And it's interesting how the Lord just orchestrates. He's the best orchestrator, right? So I want to ask the question and then I want to talk into this idea of how do we turn? How do we turn in? And it will be different for every person. Every person is going to have a different turning in process, turning in tool, turning in vehicle, turning in methodology. Every person is going to be different because God's just different for each one of us. And so there's no right or wrong answers to this question. The question is, how do you turn? What is the way that you turn? Now there's, as I said, lots of ways. There's inner man ways. We can start in the head. I think as uh, Craig pointed out, we can start initiating the head. And it's wonderful. Get the ship steered in the right direction <laughs> if you want to go that way, you know. So sometimes you just have to get a hold of the wheel and turn it. It's kind of like take every thought captive, right? Okay. Sometimes it's by hearing testimonies. Somebody shares a testimony and whoop, it happens. It could be by somebody around you just dripping on you. And I'm talking about the best kind of dripping. I think something like that happened with Angela this morning or today. She said something on the way in that I don't think this is what she expected, but something began to happen. Something, the percolator began percolating, you know? <laughs> you think that's going back to the old days, but now you got this crazy little French press thing, or not French press, but French percolator. It's about so big, and it's just a single cup percolator, and that's the end thing again. Percolator's coming back around. So what happens when our spirit man begins percolating when we're around people who are carriers? Carriers. Are you a carrier? Yeah. Are you a carrier? Do you have enough to give away? Do you have enough that it just yeah. sloshes <laughs> out without you thinking about it? You guys been quoting 23rd Psalm. Is it really true or was it just a memorized verse? My cup runs over? Is that the new term I've been sloshed? <laughs> <laughs> Slosh is a good word. That's how these things, how those terms get started. <laughs> you like 23rd Psalm. Is it a reality? Do you aspire to that or does that is that just your theology? Is that just your biblical verse that you kind of like, oh, let's quote the 23rd Psalm. I feel a little bit of God. Let's just quote the 23rd Psalm. Like everybody, you know, they don't know what else to do. Let's sing Amazing Grace. Right. So what, is, what does that mean to you when it says, my cup runs over? Well, that's what we're coming into. To where we spend enough time in the heavenly regions that we become contagious infectious and it just sloshes out goes over the edge of the cup you know uh, Craig and I went mountain biking the other day trails were a little too muddy so we went on concrete trails but we had fun anyway and several times I'm talking along and I'm just like I'm talking about stuff that's precious it's precious it's more valuable than gold and man, I'm just tearing up. It's like, gosh, you know, this is getting to me. And I'm riding bikes, you know. It's like, it's just getting all over us, you know. Get messy and gooey and whatever. Anyway, the question is, so what do you, 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 what do you use to turn in? I just quoted the verse. I got it written down here. In fact, if some, I don't think anybody was on the school this morning, right? I don't think anybody. Oh, were you married? Yeah, that's right. You listened in. That's right. You had one comment. So I quoted this verse, 2 Corinthians 3.16. But whenever a person turns... Ooh, ooh, man. Oh. Whenever a person turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. 
As I said earlier, 2,000 years ago, the big bale got torn in two, right? That's a done deal, never be done again. We don't ever have to worry about that one. But then there's a veil over our eyes. The Bible says the God of this world has blinded their eyes. And so a veil gets cleared off when we turn to the Lord. And then as we go along, we go through life and stuff happens. We take a hit here and a hit there and a hit there and a disappointment there and a failure there and a stub my toe there. And then pretty soon something happens. I get glazed over, calloused over, dusty and stiff and starchy and stuck. All those ST words. <laughs> Whatever. Slosh. Slosh? Sort of. That comes later. <laughs> <laughs> and so how do we get out of that it says all we got to do is turn well now if you haven't turned before or identified your turning processes then you'll have to go invent one inventing can be kind of tough trial and error trial and error trial and error I don't know how can't make that one work that one don't work I'm giving up on everything That'd be the dumbest thing ever you ever, you ever did. <laughs> Give up on God just because you didn't find it in the first three tries, you know. No, you keep trying until you find it. But when you find it, when you find it, like the maiden in Song of Solomon, when I found him, oh, I held on to him and I would not let him go. So when you find the turning method that works for you. Man, put that up on your mirror. Etch it in stone. Write it on your forehead or do something so you don't forget how to get in. You maybe have heard me talk about on-ramps in the past. I-49, I-435. You can't get on there just anywhere you please. You can be within a car length, car length of I-435 you're on the service road, there's a ditch and a chain link fence, and you ain't getting on there. You can see it, you could quote it, you can memorize it, mm. anything That's you want to do, but you can't get on. Mm. You gotta find your on ramps. Mm. You gotta find your turning turning yes. method. What does it take for you to turn? And like I said, it's personal for everybody. There are no right and wrong answers. But find them we must, and hold on to them we must. They're your life source. They're your ticket to life. They're your ticket to vibrance. If we haven't discovered those, and if we, if we haven't logged them, journaled them, so that they're within easy reference, In my Bible here. Look at there. Woo. Over twenty years over twenty years ago I started this. These are my turning methods. These are my on ramps. I have a lot more than those now. But in the beginning, these were mandatory for me. I had to have these. If I didn't have these, I couldn't get in. There's about a dozen, maybe one or two on the back. All I have to do is just talk through these out loud so my ears hear and my, my head is reaffirmed in the value, the preciousness of these things. And when I speak them, my heart gets tender. And you saw... You saw what happened a second ago. All I did was just pull it out. You see, it's a learned response. You've trained your soul. You see, if your soul hasn't been trained, you say, well, Mark, then you're just in a habit pattern. Well, how many habits do you have that you don't like? <laughs> Why not get a good one that you like and pay your dividends, you know? <laughs> So all I got to do is just touch this thing. Messes me up royal. 
all I got to do is just kind of wispy in my mind, go through one or two of these. Like I was just quoting this morning, one of these. I'll just say it for reference here. Luke 2, verse 13. This is Simeon's in the temple. A righteous man, a sincere man. Probably been a true godly man all of his life. His heart was gripped with the Messiah's prophecies, the prophecies of the coming Messiah. How many times did he prayed into it? How many times did he long for it? How many times did he postured his heart before God? God, that's all I want. I know your word does not lie. His whole passion was put on the line before his God. Now he got a promise one time. The Bible says and God promised him he'd see the Messiah with his own eyes. Now, that's probably a pretty good day, right? Mm -hmm. A good day? It wasn't as good as the day when a little young couple walked in with a little package of joy in their arms and put this package in his arms. A little eight-day-old boy. <laughs> and instantly, instantly, his spirit rose to the occasion. All the passion of all the years of all the prayers that he had ever put forth before God were realized in this one moment. And he says, Now mine eyes have beheld the consolation of Israel. In other words, his heart had realized all of his dreams and hopes and prayers and longings. Now, what is that to me? This is one of my on ramps. Almost every time I ponder or speak about that, it messes me up royal. I'm sucked in, and I don't even know why. I don't know why God does that. I don't know why something in my personality, my spirit, my character, my background, my upbringing, I don't know what it is, but something takes me there every time. Now there's 11 or 12 more of those on here. Do you think that would be a good asset to have around your life? countless times. I'm out ministering. I'm out somewhere in Timbuktu. My heart's as cold as a cucumber. I don't feel anything. And I know i got to step up before the people. And it ain't okay for this guy to step up with a cold heart. That is not okay. How am I going to get there? I pull out some of my own ramps. My turning methods. Now, there's a whole lot of more methods that we could use. Let me just mention a few, and then I'd like for you, if you don't mind, to share some of yours. And by the way, there's no right or wrong, okay? And the reason I'm asking you to share is so the rest of us can profit from the tools that you've discovered. You think that would be a good idea? I think that'd be a good idea. Is this a good subject? Is yes. this okay? Yes. Okay. So, by turning aside, we could turn in. We could go to our belly region. Here's something I've done from since I was a kid. Literally, in a teenager, we were in a move of God. They literally had you put your belly, your hands on your belly, and begin to validate your spirit man. Give attention to your spirit man. Yes. I recognize that you are the rightful leader of this thing called Mark. You're the right leader. And I bless you now to take the leadership and lead me into spiritual consciousness, into heavenly consciousness, into the throne room consciousness, into the spirit of God consciousness. I bless you, my spirit man. And so I just begin to kind of pull up. And pulling up for me is a way of just acknowledging and activating my spirit man. Now I've done that since I was a teenager. Let's see, was that a hundred years ago? <laughs> Something. Whatever. And so now, all I have to do many, many times is just put my hands there and still my mind. I can't let my mind go willy-nilly. Still my mind. My hands on my stomach. Man, I have physical sensations. I have bodily sensations. 
tingles. The chills thing, goosebump thing, you know, happens. Why is that? Because I've developed it. I've trained myself in a method, a tool, a vehicle to get me to where I want to go. Does your mind say, I want to be in the heavenlies? Okay, you're going to open your toolbox. Which tool are you going to pull out? What's the tool for this moment? Is this making any sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think it is. I mean, I, I've walked down this road so many years. Not the heavenly routes, route so much, but into the, into the God consciousness realm. That's something I've done for, for, like I said, since a teenager. It's only been in the last two to five years. I've done the thing, come on up into the heavenlies. But everything I learned in the past now serves me very well into the next step. So just putting my hand on my stomach. Here's another one. My mind, how many of you, when you go to sleep, is your mind going about a thousand different directions? Only about three people. You guys, the rest of you are pretty blessed. You guys must just drop off to sleep in about three seconds. Awesome. I, I would like you to help the rest of us, okay? Now let me ask that question again. How many of you, when you try to go to sleep, is your mind going in a thousand different directions? Okay, a few more. Okay. You finally decided, huh, Sandy? Okay. I'll join the party. <laughs> so here's what I've done since I was a kid, and now it's translated better when I've become more heavenly conscious. When I was a child, and I'd lay down in my brain just going a thousand miles an hour, and I'd realize it like, oh my gosh, this is just uncontrollable. Until I would just say, stop, mind. My, my, my eyes are closed. And all my attention, look at this. All my attention goes like this. It's like I'm still seeing, but I got my eyes closed. It goes to just one little area, and I don't allow any thoughts to go in there. Now that's what I did as a kid to get to sleep. But that works really good now that I'm bringing all thoughts captive, take every thought captive, right? I'm quoting scripture, you know, you recognize that. Take every thought captive, and now this is my avenue. Oh, there you are, Lord. Let me just focus on you. How about your eyes tonight? Your smile. See, it just pulled everything in. So that's two tips, no, three tips of mine. Uh, let's do the uh, Yahweh just for a little activation here and then several others might want to uh, speak into what your tool is your tool for turning all right so uh, Rick and Dustin. I can't I think of Dustin, Dustin. Dustin. man so sorry uh, so Rick and Dustin have mentioned the, uh, this practice or this exercise of breathing in the name of God. One of his names is Yahweh, right? Yahweh? So we breathe in Yah and breathe out Way. Now, uh, okay, if you're there, you're not going to have any trouble with it. If you're not there, meaning if this is not like natural or normal for you, your head wants to get in a way like, why am I not feeling anything? So. Think of this, Yahweh. You're thinking about not a concept, but you're thinking about a person. A person, a real living person. Now, when you breathe in, remember Jesus breathed on his disciples and they were filled with the Holy Ghost. Remember that? That's what it says. This was before Day of Pentecost. That's an interesting concept by itself. But anyway, he breathed on. So in his breath, there is life. In his breath is the ability to fill you with the Holy Ghost. So, think of this. When, you're, when we breathe in Yah, translate from what happens in the natural realm to, to something that is now happening in the spiritual realm. The natural realm is when we breathe in oxygen, our lungs expand, the capillaries or whatever those little tubes are in our lungs assimilate the oxygen 
and then the oxygen is transported to every part of our body, every vital organ and every extremity. The oxygen goes from our lungs into every part. It supplies the full need for oxygen. Nothing else is needed for oxygen. Now we need nutrition also, but okay, so now think of this. When you breathe in ya, and we're breathing in a real, caring, loving person. We're breathing him in. Now, if you're heady, this is going to be another problem. Well, I thought he was already in me. Yes, he is in you. But there are all kinds of tools for different places in our growth. Okay? So we're going to breathe him in. And think of just as the oxygen goes to every part of our being. This breath of Yahweh goes into every part of our triune being, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? So we're going to just do a little therapy. Okay? Just a little therapy. So if you don't mind, let's all do it together. Ready? Ready for Yah? I like to hold my breath a little while. I like to just feel the, the richness of that oxygenated heavenly breath from God going into me. So I hold my breath there just to immerse, just to marinate, just so it has full impact, at least as much as my I can allow. All right? Ready for y'all? Is it going in? Ready for y'all? Jesus, you've never left us or forsaken us. That's your word. So you're right here more really than we realize. You're right here. And just as you breathe on your disciples, we're breathing you in again today, 2,000 years later. Let's breathe in, y'all. For some, this is going to be a great tool. And we've already heard that it's a great tool for some. Others, you're going to say, that's not my cup of tea. Not a problem. Not a problem at all. Move on to something else. But what we want to do is find as many ways that work for us as possible. Let's try this one. So let's do the... Uh, you can stand up if you like or not, but it helps me to actually um, activate and put it to action. And Rick just pointed out the idea of walking through Jesus the door. This is John 10, 9. This is right out of the Bible. This is square 101. This is class 101. This is what we do almost every place we go when we're opening up new territory and new people to new thoughts. So we take John 10, 9, and it goes like this. Jesus says, I am the door. If any man comes in <coughs> through me, he will be saved. And he shall go in and out and find pasture. Now, most people probably thought that to be a salvation verse. In other words, you come through Jesus the door, you get saved, right? Sounds like it. He is saved. That sounds like a salvation verse. Except the next phrase, it can't be a salvation verse because he should go in and out and find pasture. 
You don't get saved and unsaved and saved and unsaved and saved and unsaved and find pasture. That's right. So it can't be a salvation verse. It's learning how to go in and out of the heavenly realm, living in both realms without yeah. big hoops to jump through. Yeah. There's only one thing to remember. You go through Jesus. Now, just for those who are wondering, like, are you doing crazy hocus pocus stuff from the other side? No. Jesus said in John 10, 1, there are other ways to go in. But if you do any other way, you're a thief and a robber. And we ain't going to be thieves and robbers. So, what door are we going to use? Jesus. And so now, how do you find the door? How do you create the door? Well, most of you like Bob Jones, and he loved this word word called golden imagination. In other words, you align your imagination with the Word of God and or Holy Spirit at the time. So how would we do that? Well, another phrase Jesus said in another verse is, except you become like a little child. You can't even enter the kingdom. It's not possible unless you get out of your big boy brain. Your big boy brain will keep you out of the kingdom. But Jesus said, you could talk it over with him. <laughs> you got to become like a... What do little children do? They simply believe, and they don't mind activating their golden imagination. And so, what we're going to do is become like a little child, and just now I'm just going to step into my experience and you guys can do it yourself or uh, you know take a cue from me if you care to glance at me once in a while but I really rec recommend that you have your own encounter you really engage not with your head but with your belly your spirit man okay so Jesus thank you for making it so very simple you're the door if we use you, if we come through you, then we not only are saved, but we're safe. This is safe mode of travel through you. This is the safe mode. Everything else is thieves and robbers, and this is the safe mode. So Jesus, now like a little child, like a little child, I just create a doorway in front of me. In my mind's eye, not with my big boy brain now, with my mind's eye, I create a doorway. Jesus, you said, you're the door. So Jesus, what I want to do is just accept your invitation and step into and through you. So here I go, Jesus, real simple. No fanfare, no bells and whistles. As simple as a little child's believing. I step into you. As simple as that. Oh, now Jesus, I let the atmosphere of you surround me. Permeate me. Pushing in, pressing in on all parts of me. You're infusing me. Let's see, what would there be inside of you, Jesus? Love and acceptance. Huh. How about shalom? How about just good old peace? Jesus, so we, each one of those, whenever you highlight it, we just stop there and take it in. Drink it in, drink it in, drink it in. Drink it in. And Jesus, you may put your arms around us. Tangible. Your hands around my shoulders 
I feel your hand on one shoulder and you're pulling me into your chest. Oh, yes, and that just is the fullness of joy. The place of wholeness. The place of completeness. And Jesus, I let you just breathe on me. Lord, if this does anything for anybody, I heard one guy pray, pickle me, Lord, pickle me. Like a cucumber that just gets marinated in pickling sauces. And he comes out pickled. Oh, this, that's happening. It's real. You're changing and transforming. 2 Corinthians 3.18 as we behold, we're being transformed and transfigured. Wow. It's really true. More true than we realize. But you're helping our minds to take a step back. You're helping our spirit step up. Lord, we just marinate. Now in this place, let's do the yaw and way exercise again. Remember, we're inside. Here's yaw. lost inside of him wonderfully lost could you get wonderfully lost inside of him where nothing else matters every issue of life falls away ready for Yah? with every breath his life forces the substance of life in him is now in us thank you Jesus you said is anybody weary and heavy laden has anybody got any heavy burdens you said, Jesus, come to me and I'll give you rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus, how about if we just breathe in a little shalom right here? Everybody just, if Jesus has just highlighted to us this carefree shalom come into rest mode what do you say we just breathe that in just you don't have to say anything but just take it into you and see that rest permeating every part of your being your nerves been uptight well they're getting unraveled now your muscles been tight They're getting loosened up now. Muscles in the back of your head and in your neck tightened up. Here, breathe. Take another dose. A couple more pills, all right? Take two and then we'll call him in the morning. Ready? <laughs> breathe in some rest. Put your hand on the back of your neck if that's relevant to you. If your muscles in the back of your neck have been tight, just say, oh, right there, Lord, right there. Or wherever it is on your body. And so we're in Jesus, and several have highlighted the idea of fragrance, smelling. So what do you say we just 
look at, take a look, check up on at least your five senses. As Bob Jones called them, our golden senses. So we believe in spiritual sight. When you see things in the spirit, that's our golden seeing. When you hear things in the spirit, that's your golden hearing. We've talked about fragrance. That's your golden smelling, fragrance. Uh, touch and taste. So you're in Jesus right now. See, what we're doing here, what we're, this isn't just for one-off. This is classroom. This is building our muscle. This is building our familiarity with the heavenly region, with our spirit region of our man, of our, of our personhood, our spirit man, so that we learn how to travel in these regions, right? We're, we've gone beyond garden variety religion. We're moving into the heavenly realms. So we have to activate, we have to exercise. So what I'd like to do now, get as still as you can mentally and you're inside of Jesus remember you step through the door you're inside of him you still there you still there now I'd like you to activate and check up on your spiritual golden sight what do you see only your sight right now what do you see Activating your spiritual sense of sight. Can you define it? Can you interpret it? Now I'd like you to activate your spiritual sense of hearing. sounds around you? Do you hear voices? Is Jesus himself saying something? Are there heavenly sounds? Maybe your spirit man is talking. your smeller now <laughs> your spiritual gift of smelling your golden sense of smell do you smell fragrance in this it says our praises are like a sweet smelling incense he believes in this stuff now how about feeling activate feeling several have felt his touch John has pulled in morphed into oneness with Jesus what do you feel Not a boy on your head, arm around your shoulder, the brush of angel wings, feel his breath. What's his touch feel like? Is it cold or hot or warm or soft? Is he gentle? believes in this stuff he says oh taste and see that the Lord is good he believes in this and we're just learning how to engage with him what 
do you taste? Scripture says, I took your word and it was pleasant to the taste. Sweeter than honey and sweeter than the honeycomb. And then we have one more. Sorry. Ephesians says that the Lord would illuminate the eyes of your imagination. The root meaning of that word, we always say the eyes of your understanding, the root meaning of it is imagination. That's where we get golden imagination. So what kinds a visionary or future ideas is Jesus planting in your heart or mind? Is he igniting imaginations that are golden? To be in keeping with his word, but beyond what you've experienced. Let me just give you one one way to imagine. One, one frontier. Think of this. If you were to stay on this trajectory, on this path of moving above the line, if you were not to turn to the side or get distracted, where could you be one year from now? What kinds of realities could you experience? What would be real in your life with you having real life stories to tell about one year from now and five years from now how many trophies would be on the mantle of your life giving tribute to the graces of God functioning in your life he's taken you beyond above the line you've explored the realms of angels and creatures and elders and saints and gates and wheels and fires and winds and seas and glassy seas and sapphire stones and emerald wind rainbows and mansions and thrones. You've explored those. They're becoming more real to you than how you know to get to your job tomorrow morning or Monday morning. Can you have any imaginary pictures of that? that Jesus would illuminate for you? Wow. Jesus, well, thank you for this therapeutic time. Just give us a little therapy. How about that? And uh, Jesus, as we move along on this uh, journey, uh, these kinds of therapy sessions won't be like uh, just, you know, uh, random occurrences, but they will become more and more and more our normal positioning of ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. You've been really good. Always good. That's a huge understatement, but thank you. And Jesus, now, like a little child, we've, uh, maybe I should say, <laughs> we're learning to uh, keep our attention span focused. And we've been in here for a while. And it's going to get longer and longer and longer until this becomes a norm. But now, Jesus, we are going to back out because you said we could go in and out and find pasture. So, Jesus, I just step back out. And I thank you for all the deposits that were made into me and us together. You're better than we expected. You're awesome, Jesus. Amen. Did anybody taste anything? Creme brulee. <laughs> What did you taste? 
creme brulee. That's kind of the uppity stuff. <laughs> oh, smooth and crunchy and oh. <laughs> awesome. Creme brulee, come on. Awesome. Uh, you know, Heather, stand up here just a minute if you don't mind. Just, I want you to take this mic and I want you gently just try to not think about yourself. But here's a, here's a truth we know. If we've been given something, then we can give it away. If it's not ours, we can't give it away. That's called thievery. But if it's ours, then we have the capacity to give it away. Would you stand right up here? And Heather, what I'd like you to do is just gently, just from your spirit, man, try to not be in your head. Try to be in your spirit, man. Just say, here, I give you some creme brulee. Give it away. Just give it to all of us. <laughs> oh, you see it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, you got it. You can do it. Thank you. Thank you for Kremberly. I just give it to you all. It's so rich and it's free. How about Mary? Can Mary have some? Yeah. Here, Mary, have some creme <laughs> How about Judy? Is Judy okay? She has some. Yeah. Give some to Terry back there. Say, here, Terry. Have here, some. Terry. Thank you. How about Kim? Could he have some? Yeah. Come on. It's the richest yeah. thing, there and it's are. so sweet. Yeah. How about Rick? Is it okay for him? Yes, and it's smooth, <laughs> and it is. Yeah. How about Linda back there? Is it okay for her? Yes, definitely. Say, here, Linda. Here, Linda. Have some creme brulee. <laughs> Uh, how about Maureen over there? Is it okay for her? Yes. Come on. <laughs> Give it to her. <laughs> it's the richest of fame. Yeah. 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 I'm telling you guys, there's something in this. Yeah. Just, just go ahead and marinate. Just take it in. The richest affair. That's a biblical word. So come on. We're just going in. Those, those biblical verses, there are doorways into big rooms of reality. The richest affair. Creme brulee. What does that taste like? Oh, creamy. And with that sugary crunch on the top. Woo. And it just melts over your tongue with just the right amount of crunch. Who else tasted anything? Did you taste something? It's a part of the sing. It's a part of the sing, but then it led into taste. Um, when he pulled me in, this time I looked around instead of just seeing the light out of there, I saw, when I used my vision, I saw his print, his fingerprint. And I realized I was being absorbed into him and I was being marked by him, the same print being imprinted on. And then when he's talking about taste, I just look at the print a little closer and I realize I'm able to taste his sweat <laughs> and it was sweet in the print. Oh. So it was just like you see the, the shiny in, in the fingerprint when you're a little warm. He was holding me in and he was pulling me in. It was unique. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> so. Anybody know the name R.W. Shambach? Yeah. yeah. A real rowdy preacher, you know, Pentecostal guy. So he'd have a stack of hankies, handkerchiefs, right, or clean ones. And he's, he's preaching along, he's working up a lather. He'd, wipe, he'd take one of these, wipe his forehead and put it on this pile. He'd go along and take up another handkerchief and wipe his forehead and put it on this pile. And afterwards, he handed out these prayer cloths filled with anointing so sweat it was sweat, it was sweat. <laughs> sweat can carry anointing <laughs> it can taste good too <laughs> oh I don't know you got something Michael no Mary's got something right now
So this this is a little interesting, but when I was hugging him and sensed his fragrance, it was the most delightful fragrance, but I knew that it included his sweat. Yeah. But it was sweet and it, it was, was just good. <laughs> it was. It was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love it. I love it. That's what I was thinking when I was eating or looking at it. Oh. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't look it. <laughs> Speaking of sweet, Craig back here is smelling something. So we went through the door and I felt led to go to a place I go a lot. And um, the place I go a lot is a garden. It's like a little English garden gate. You go through the gate and to the left are white daffodilly light flowers. To the right are yellow daffodilly light flowers, a big patch of them. And it's, I've been going there for almost over a year. Um, but this time when I went, I could see in the white daffodils and was invited to walk into them. There is a white, rising, hazy, not smoke, but just light, rising stuff. And so I went in and I smelled it. It was wonderful. And then, then I looked to the right and, and um, I, I couldn't go into the yellow for a while. The Lord was right there. And so I just realized I needed to wait and be still. And Mark was going on the smelling and the feeling. And, and then I felt released to get up as I waited to get up and go into the yellow. So the yellow is righteousness. And I was interested to see because the, the daffodil smell on the white side was very close, similar to daffodils. So it was just a bit brighter. Um, and I was interested to see what, you know, what does righteousness smell like? So I went there and I just stood there and and then, whoo, wafts of a butterscotchy smell. And I'm like, whoa, that's weird. And so then I started, and, I, and so when I smelled in the spirit on the white side, the, the, the purity, I didn't smell it in my natural, but I had the sense of it in my spiritual. I'm not sure that makes sense, but I'm, there's a difference for me. And um, there's attributes I understand when I smelled in the spirit, but now I'm on the butter on, on the righteousness side. I am smelling and tasting butterscotch in my mouth. So I got up and walked around. I'm like, certainly something's cooking here with butterscotch. And I was certainly you have a candle lit somewhere. And then um, I can't get it out of my mouth or my nose right now. Whoa. I, I swear I'm sitting under a butterscotch candle. You ever be near a candle just like? <laughs> Actually, I don't really like butterscotch. <laughs> it's interesting, so. All right, so uh, what was the characteristic of butterscotch? What did it represent? Righteousness. Okay, come here, Craig. Bring your mic. You gotta give it away. Oh yeah. So, you've been given a gift. It's immersed you, it's marinating you. You've been assimilating it. It's been coming into you. Righteousness, and what was the flowers? Daffodil like yellow. The yellow ones. Mm -hmm. You've just been getting in a field of daffodils. If that might help you, mm -hmm. you know, as we're moving into this, think of yourself sit standing or sitting in a field of yellow daffodils. And Craig's going to release some here. As you walk into the field of daffodils, I, I never walked into these patches before until today. I've been there for over a year because the, today I was invited to walk in. I never walked in because it's so dense, I didn't want to crush them, but they all move out of the way. It's all part of their purpose. So you can step into it, you can lay down in it. But I release that to you, just the waft of righteousness, the rising of its beauty, the rising of its smell, the rising of its glory. When I was there, I was like, Lord, what is this rising? And it's. It's the attributes of righteousness that the flowers are giving off that we can taste and, and partake in. So I release that right now, that, that beautiful rising waft. It's, as you breathe in, it comes in. As you breathe out, it goes out. You can partake of it as you breathe and just be enveloped in it, delight in it just an attribute of Father, an attribute of life that we can dwell in. I release it right now. Beautiful righteousness, the rising, the swell of it, the be surrounded by it. 
come into your senses. It's an attribute of God, an attribute of our new creation that we can delight in. We just, Father, we delight in that right now. We breathe it in and take it in. Give us some butterscotch. <laughs> yeah, that taste of butterscotch, I release that as well. Breathe it in. Let it come into your senses. Let it fill your nostrils. Let it fill the back of your tongue, your mouth. It's the flavor of righteousness right now. We dwell in it, we taste it, we, we partake in it, drink it in, breathe it in. Mm. All right. Any other pictures? Okay. Did anybody smell the butterscotch? Did you smell? Did anybody smell butterscotch? Greg did. I did. Cheryl, Cheryl did. did. She was smelling. Cool. Good. Kyle, Kim. The picture of the word butterscotch coming through your mind. Yeah, before it all started. That's awesome. Huh? Cool. That's good. I love it. The Lord's highlighting it. It's highlighting. Where's those butterscotch candies? We need to yeah. get those out to give everybody one, you know? What do they call Werther's or something like that? Anybody else smell? Those aren't butterscotch. No. No? Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Don't give out the wrong one now, whatever you do. Rocks, butterscotch. Rocks, okay. <laughs> All right. Any other pictures or impressions? We're going to take a little break here and then come back. Pictures or impressions?